My first question is the general one. Who are you? <laughs> Actually, Tom, that is a very good question, because I wake up at 5 o'clock in the morning in a filthy temper every day of the week. So who am I would probably be a very good place to start. All the time, I knew in the back of my mind that I wanted to be in the interiors industry. What I didn't know was how I was going to get there. So the who am I has been a question I've asked myself for years on end. And I think the one thing I have learned is that I'm a man with a lot of passion. Because I think if you want to be driven to do something you really enjoy, you've got to stick at it. And you can't just sort of give up and lie down. Most of the people in our business, who I know and respect, have been bankrupt sort of 27 times each. I'm sure they have. But we all get up and get on with it. And I think that who I am is the fact that I'm somebody who's passionate about what I do. And I've been very lucky in the fact there are one or two people the world over who like it enough to buy it. I think that's probably the answer to that question, as an opener. <laughs> right. <laughs> Apart from the fact that, well, maybe it is the fact that people love what you create, what is it that drives you? What is it that gets you up every morning at 5 a.m.? I think... <clears throat> I think we might move the clock to seven and be more honest about it. <laughs> um, I wake up every day very excited. What I love to do, and the whole purpose of what I do, is I love finding people who are very clever at doing things. And I love finding ways of using them to make things that I think I can sell in my shop. And I think that is what gets me out of bed in the morning. We went to stay with some very stylish friends in Italy, in one of those wonderful houses, which is a Trulli, which is down near Bari. And in their house, they had the most extraordinary plastic chairs I've ever seen in my life. They were like a plastic cobweb. And I was very taken when Philip Stark told us how chic it was to own the ghost chair. And I looked at this chair and I thought, do you know, we're having a dinner in London in four weeks' time. If I could have 12 of these chairs that stack up, I could keep them in the back of the flat, and when we have a dinner, we could bring them out. So I said to my friend, where did you get the chairs? He said, I got them in a really disgusting supermarket down the road. I said, goodness me. So we went to the disgusting supermarket, and it was absolutely terrifying. It was full of Bridget Jones underpants, these chairs, candles that smelt like nothing natural had ever happened to them, and right on the top shelf. So there they were, and they're clear and plastic and beautiful. So we climbed up the racking, got a chair off the shelf. There was nobody to help you, you know. And there, luckily, was a label which we were able to peel off and stick on the inside of our arm. So we, we left with something like a pair of underpants, or I can't remember what. And I got home, and I googled, and I found this really small little company in the south of Italy making injected moulded plastic. And what they really did was make milk crates. But every now and again, they made something with the bits that fell off the edge of the milk crate, and here we had this beautiful chair. Now, that's what I think is exciting about what I do. It's finding something and taking it and saying, if we dust this off and put it over here, it's actually really lovely. What is the single achievement that you're most proud of in your time as a, as a, as a shopkeeper? <laughs> Staying as a shopkeeper, I think, probably. I mean, it's all a bit of that, isn't it, Needs really? Mm -hmm. I mean, we put our fingers up and pray every morning. In terms of product achievement... It has to be William Yard Crystal. It has to be the glasses. Um, it was an idea that I had 15 years ago. I met an extraordinary man called Tim Jenkins, who's my partner in that business. And we together decided that there were so many beautiful things made in England and Ireland in the 19th century that could inspire us to make beautiful crystal today that would be perfect really to export mainly to the American market. And that's what we did. We've recreated and kept going skills, particularly in Eastern Europe, where the crystal business is really the strength, um, that might have died because people weren't ordering fine things. They were ordering things from China made by machine, which is all very well. But if you have a lot of craftsmen who have skills, I think it's really quite important to keep those skills going. And now, in the factories that we're using, 
and I go there, I see a lot of younger people coming on, showing interest. We've got student classes, we've got educational programs. I think I'm quite proud of that. I think that's quite good. Um, and it's also nice when you see the odd piece selling rather than dropping it, which I do most of the time. I just really love what I do and I'm very grateful to have the, the health and the, and the support to be able to do it. I'm also very proud of an achievement of, of having staff that are prepared to put up with my tantrums. And, you know, everybody thinks designers are probably like, you know, Elton John in that film, you know, and sort of scream and shout and kick the door. We only do that on Tuesdays. The rest of the time it's quite <laughs> peaceful.